Welcome to our weekly maritime vlog. I'm Corey Ransom with International Maritime Security Associates. This week, we are continuing our series on bridge coordination, talking about communication. Before we jump into the vlog topic this week, I wanted to take a couple of seconds to talk about something interesting that's happened over the past couple of weeks in the maritime industry. Uridium Corporation, which is a communication satellite provider for communication around the world, was approved by the Maritime Safety Committee of the IMO to be only the second satellite company as an approved provider for the GMDSS system. So it's going to be pretty exciting to see for our industry how that evolves over the coming weeks, months, and years. Okay, now into the topic. The reason we wanted to talk about bridge coordination and situational awareness last week and communication this week is some of the trials are starting to unfold with the collision of the USS Fitzgerald. The officer of the deck um, had her trial and was found guilty, but one of the interesting points is, is she took responsibility and was open and honest about what was happening. So we thought with the things happening with the USS Fitzgerald, it'd be a good idea as mariners for us to take a look at some of these topics that we may take for granted. So this week in part two, we're continuing on bridge coordination, specifically talking about communication. And to us, there's really two parts of communication internal communication and external communication. Bridge communication is extremely important to the success of the overall vessel operation. As we look specifically at internal communication, there's many little pieces and parts, as most of you know, working on vessels that make up that communication piece. On some vessels, you may have only one or two people on watch. Typically, you see that on some of the cargo lines and some of the large yachts. On the cruise lines and military vessels, you'll see a bridge watch comprised of a much bigger team. And on military vessels, you'll also have a secondary watch that's in the combat information center. So internal communication on the ship can get pretty crazy when you talk about the potential of 15 people in multiple locations that make up part of that situational awareness team. So with internal communication on the bridge, when we take a look at taking the watch as the OOD, it's extremely important that we understand all the situational awareness pieces, but when we look at internal, who's part of that team and what does that communication look like? As the OOD, it's extremely important to have a very open line of communication with everybody on your team, whether everybody's on the bridge or between bridge and CIC or other parts of the ship. One of the captains that I served with always told us when we were in critical operations or even just general underway operations, regardless of rank, regardless of position, if you see anything, speak up. And I think fostering that type of communication on the bridge and with the bridge team internally is extremely important. And that also extends to the watch in engineering spaces, that there's an open line of communication between the bridge and engineering spaces because engineering issues are critical to the success of the overall operation. Communication is so important, but as you start to look into different accidents and incidents that have happened from the very smallest up to the major catastrophes, communication was one of the links that really failed in most of these cases. And that was one of the reasons for the problems and the collision with the USS Fitzgerald. External communication is also very important to that overall situational awareness and the bridge coordination. And with external communication, there's potentially multiple points of external communication. If we are working with shoreside managers or operations center, who's our communication link that we need to be speaking to if there's a disaster or an issue? If you take a look at the El Faro disaster that happened back in October of 2015, that was one of the issues that was cited as a problem. As they were trying to communicate with their shoreside managers, one of their emergency calls went completely unanswered. So that external communication link as to who we need to call and when is very important to help us, whether it's normal operations or into an emergency and disaster. Also part of that is what other vessels in the area are we communicating with for collision avoidance? Who's out there and who are we talking to from that standpoint? So external communication really helps us put that situational awareness picture together, but also is a key point when we're trying to deconflict traffic as to who's potentially a conflict when it comes to collision and who do we need to be speaking with. 
The last piece that we're going to talk about is something that I know with newly minted OODs when I was in the Coast Guard always caused angst and consternation, and that was calling the captain. One of the things, whether you're on a yacht or you're on a cruise ship or on a cargo vessel, never hesitate to call the captain. That is their duty and their responsibility when things start to go sideways or you have an issue or a problem. I had just the fortunate um, that I served with some really good captains on the vessels that I was on in the Coast Guard. And when I made it to the point of being an OOD, that I never hesitated, even in the middle of the night, to call the captain. And even if it was something that maybe potentially I didn't need to call him, the captain always had that line of communication open. And they also were good leaders and realized that they didn't have all the answers and had to rely on the people that worked with them. So let me give you just one piece of advice that comes directly from my experience. If you work for a captain that thinks that their stuff doesn't stink, that they have bad communication, and think that their way is the only way, I would personally be looking for another captain or another ship to serve a part of. Thanks for joining us in our two-part series here. We will make sure that we have part one will be linked down below. So if you didn't see our video on situational awareness, you'll be able to see that. There are a ton of really good resources that are available to Mariners when it talks about communication and situational awareness. And if you're a young person in this industry looking to move up to chief officer or the XO or staff captain or captain position, really take a look at some of the resources that have been put out by some phenomenal leaders and captains and crew members and people in this industry talking about these subjects. Great resources out there. Hey, thanks for joining us this week. We really appreciate all the viewers we have across all the different channels that watch our uh, videos each and every week. It's a lot of fun for us to put these together. We want to engage and interact with you guys so we continue to put together topics on subjects that you guys want to see and hear about. We have a phenomenal amount of experience here at IMSA, so let us draw on that experience to bring engaging and exciting topics to you guys. Connect to us through our social media, detailed in the banner above and also in the comments section below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get notified when we put out new videos and hit that like button on all the videos that you like. Remember, if there's anything that we can do to help you when it comes to maritime security, maritime risk management, or regulatory compliance, please don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions, issues, or concerns because we're always happy to steer you in the right direction.